Hello everyone and welcome to day 26 of the Movies Amount 30 Day Movie Challenge. I know, I didn't think we'd get this far either. We are now less than five days away from completing this gar- Are those subtitles? What do you need subtitles for? I'm speaking in perfect English! Hello everyone and welcome back to the Movies and Milk 30 Day Film Challenge where today myself and Michael will be discussing our favourite films that are not in our native language. As I mentioned in one of my previous videos, I used to be a lot more active on the YouTube platform. A majority of my subscribers were older and from different parts of the world. And naturally through these communications I was recommended a lot more films from these certain areas of the world. And one day I was recommended a little film from post-war Italy. And that little film just so happens to be Vittorio De Sica's neorealistic masterpiece Bicycle Thieves. Released in 1947, just following World War II, Bicycle Thieves was introduced to the world, or for its authentic Italian pronunciation, Ladri di Biciclette. That one there. Bicycle Thieves follows Antonio Ricci who, after the war, is desperately seeking work to provide for his young family. Within the opening minutes of Bicycle Thieves, Antonio is presented with an opportunity of hanging movie posters and promotional posters around war-torn Rome. However, the only necessity that the job requires is that one owns a bicycle. Although Antonio does in fact own a bike, it is broken and he cannot afford to repair that bike. And so quickly following the opening moments of the film, Antonio relays the job description to his wife Maria, who in turn pawns her beloved and prized bedsheets in exchange for cash which will then be put forward for Antonio's new bicycle. Ecstatic with everything seemingly falling into place, as Antonio is finishing up his first day of the job of hanging movie posters around war-torn Rome, a young adolescent sees that the bike is momentarily unattended and he makes off with Antonio's bike. Antonio witnesses the young teenager make off with the bike and he desperately searches for it for the remainder of the film. And on the way he employs a very young helper, Bruno Ricci who is his elder son. For the duration of the film these are the central characters Antonio and Bruno and it makes for one of the best on-screen chemistries that I have ever seen and definitely one of the most convincing father-son relationships that have been portrayed on screen. Bicycle Thieves, although very simplistic in its narrative, very much has an outwardly complexity to it. The film can be very very, very unexpectedly funny at times, which does take away from the momentary desperation from both of these central characters. However, it's something that we may view in today's day and age in regards to a bicycle being a prized possession of ours. Although bicycles today can be incredibly expensive, if they were to go missing we would absolutely not go to the lengths as these central characters do. The character of Antonio is so incredibly desperate to retrieve this prized item of his. This is the engine, the catalyst if you will, for him maintaining this job and supplying for his young family. If that is taken away from him, the job is no more. And we have such a fantastic, grounded and realistic performance for first and last time actor Lamberto Maggiorani. And not to mention that his young son in the film Bruno, who can't be more than seven years old, portrayed by Enzo Steola, who went on to have quite a proficient acting career in Italy. He is also brilliant in the film and one of the best examples of child acting that I've ever seen. Director Vittorio De Sica purposely cast two unknowns to really heighten the realism of this film. And honestly, having seen this film many Many times now. Each and every time I'm so taken aback by the talent portrayed by these central performances. Although I am not very familiar with Italian actors myself, I am very surprised, especially with Lamberto Maggiorani, having never been cast for a lead performance in another film in his life. Following Bicycle Thieves, his career in acting was pretty much over, very unfortunately. I'm just filming it. The ending of Bicycle Thieves is among one of my favourite film endings of all time. Had I not discussed this film today, this would definitely be my day 30 choice, which by the way, a wee tease for you, is our favourite film endings of all time. I had seen this film go in one direction and one direction only, and considering this film was made in 1947, I was truly expecting an uplifting and inspiring ending, but that is not what we get at all. And without completely spoiling the ending, because I really do believe that people should seek this film out immediately. This is one of the most devastating yet bittersweet endings in film history. I could talk about this film until I'm blue in the face, but I do have a fear if I continue to talk about this film I'm going to spoil 
pretty much everything about it. Bicycle Thieves, in my mind, is one of the greatest films of all time. If I was a lecturer in media or film or television or anything to do with the arts, Bicycle Thieves would absolutely be of utmost importance to show to my students, to showcase just how fantastic and inspiring these films were. And luckily for us in this day and age, we can freely seek out these films and enjoy them for what they are. Anyway, Michael, I'm going to pass this one back to you, so please take it away. I've actually got milk today. Thank you very much Matthew. Now I have to admit, less than a decade ago I was one of those ignorant people that thought only good movies were done in the English language. But in the past few years I have turned over a new leaf and grew to not only appreciate foreign films, but love foreign films. I understand every country has bad movies, but all the foreign films that I have seen personally have all been they're all ten times better than most of the English movies that I've seen. So when it came to picking a film for this video, I found it quite difficult. Thankfully I'd already discussed excellent films like Parasite and Climax in previous videos, so that made this decision a, a, a little bit easier for me. But for this video, I ultimately decided to go for the first foreign film that I'd ever seen. Because if it wasn't for this film making such a strong impression on me, I would have never watched films like Climax and Parasite. And that film is 2009's A Town Called Panic, or as it's known in France, Panic au Village. A Town Called Panic is an absurd stop motion animated comedy that centres around a cowboy, an Indian and a horse all living under the same roof, and today just so happens to be Horse's birthday. And at the last minute, Cowboy and Indian come together to create a barbecue for his birthday. In order to create that barbecue, they need to order some bricks. Their plan is to buy only 50 bricks, but then they end up buying 50 million bricks. They then put the rest of the bricks on the top of their house, which causes their house to crumble. And every time they try to rebuild their home, sea creatures come out from the water and, 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 and take the hard day's work. It's, it's, it's a very, very, very strange film. But my goodness, it is oh so funny. The absurdist dialogue is one thing, but the aspect that I just love the most about this film is the fact that most of the jokes are just visual. Most of the time I just find myself laughing at how the characters move. And speaking of the animation, it's Oh, it just brings a smile to my face. Like I said back in day eight, I believe, I absolutely adore the medium of stop motion. The stop motion just sort of has that handmade charm to it. The fact that all the characters are just little figurines, it just, it makes me, it just makes me feel happy. It, feel, it feels like I could make that. I mean, I lack the determination to actually pull something like this off, but Oh, it's, it's, it's so lovely to look at. Except from the few times where we get close-up shots of the characters. There are a couple of instances in here where we do get close-up shots and... Yeah, um, the, the characters' mouths don't move at all. So it's, it's, it's a bit strange. But like I said, those shots are very few and far between and instead the film is shot very wide. It feels like a live action Toy Story film, it feels like you're watching these little figurines come to life before your very eyes. Now this is a comedy film through and through, this is not like a Disney animated film in which it has that one scene where it's trying to make the audience cry. And I can see that being an issue for some people, it could get a little bit tiring with all of the constant onslaught of jokes. But thankfully the pace of this film is just frantic, it's less than 70 minutes long and it's it just... It doesn't take much out of your day. If you're looking for an animated comedy that has you either smiling or laughing your pants off, then I could not recommend A Town Called Panic highly enough. And like I said, this was the first foreign film that I'd ever watched, so the film provides a good little stepping stone into the concept of foreign films. And if you're one of those ignorant people that's like, oh, I can't watch either of these films, they're, they're not in English. Fucking grow up, eh? Thank you so very much for watching, ladies and gents. If you enjoyed, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and tell us in the comment section down below what is your favourite film that isn't in your native language. 
And if you wish to take part in this 30 day movie challenge yourself, you can find the template over on the Movies and Milk Instagram. Until next time, stay safe, don't do anything stupid, and... Et bien à demain. That... Eh, uh, that was, uh, we'll see you tomorrow in French. Et bien à demain. Yeah.